This city has a name that some might think would belong to a tropical island in the Caribbean. It is not only multicultural, but multilingual, multiracial, multireligious, and is even a multi-acronym nation. It has been given multiple names like Nanny State, Garden City, Air Conditioned Island, Amusement Park Country, and even Little Red Dot. Young in history, small in size, yet this country is the only industrialized nation along the equator and is home to the world's busiest port. This stop is Singapore. Welcome to Culture Shock. Located in the southern tip of the Malayan Peninsula, Singapore's name is derived from the Sanskrit word which means Lion City. Singapore is one of the four remaining true city-states in the world. It is the smallest nation in Southeast Asia. Home to 4.6 million people, Singapore is a multiracial nation with four major cultures. Reputed to be a garden city, trees and plants are spotted at every turn. You are greeted with clean streets, beautiful flowers and lots of greenery. You know, when I think of Singapore, I think of sun, sand, sea, beaches, and... Whoa! Incredible humidity! Singapore is a great melting pot of cultures, but it's the weather which literally melts your face. Because Singapore is just one degree north of the equator, the climate here is characterized by high temperatures, humidity, and abundant rainfall. Temperatures range from 27 to 34 degrees Celsius, and during prolonged heavy rain, relative humidity can reach a whopping 100%. So, my advice to you is this. Wear cotton, bring plenty of towels and tissues, drink lots and lots of water. Oh, and don't forget your umbrella, because you never know when the skies will open here and you will experience a tropical rainstorm. Getting to anywhere in Singapore is a breeze. From trains, taxis and buses, there's a whole lot of means for you to choose from. After checking out the various options, I headed straight for the affordable, convenient, regular cabs, which you can catch just outside the arrival terminals. Taxis are a dime a dozen in Singapore. Taxis are very comfortable and most are metered, so there's no chance of you being taken for a ride. But rates do change quite frequently, so if you're unsure, check the rate card that can be found in most taxis. Uh, to the city, please. Sure. And may I know you prefer me to go by ECP or PIE, please? PIE? Pie? I've already eaten. Oh. I did hear something about Singaporeans being fascinated with food. But to name an expressway after a dessert is a whole new ball game to me. With signs for expressways, buildings and many others, it sure looks like Singapore is not only a multiracial and multilingual country, it is also an MAN, a multi-acronym nation. This is definitely a culture shock. Let's see if there are more. Are all taxi drivers as polite as you? I believe so. Could you tell me something? I saw someone referring to uh, another person in a news agent as uncle. What's that all about? Well, this is a polite way that we Chinese address our elder. We call them uncle. Okay, so if I call you uncle and I call the women aunties, is that good? Well, you can call them sweetie pie if you want to. <laughs> sweetie pie. Well, that was some abbreviated journey back to my hotel. Just give me a sec and I'll be right back. You see, I told you I'll be right back. Okay, camera trickery aside, that was some efficient desk clerk. Got me checked into my hotel in no time. Which leaves me more than an hour to explore and find my way to my dinner appointment at some food center near the business district. Let's see if I can make my way there with another acronym. The MRT. 
Also known as Singapore's Mass Rapid Transit System, the MRT is the nation's major train system that spans the entire city-state. I figured it's probably quite a comfortable ride in such air-conditioned trains, but as I nauseously found out, peak hours are not the best times for travelling. And for someone like me who loves a bit of space, I think I'd better get off to look for some other alternatives. And I think I may have found it. From air-conditioned trains to air-conditioned buses. Quite a different experience from the trains. Buses are a great way to do a bit of sightseeing. On the way, I couldn't help but marvel at how clean and green the roads are. After a pleasant bus ride around town, I am able to make it to my dinner destination on time. But one of my friends, Dean, is late. From my conversations with Sanjay and Ray, I hear it's not uncommon for Singaporeans to arrive 10 to 15 minutes late. They call that being fashionably late. That's a culture shock for me. But that is just the beginning of culture shocking news for the evening. Why? It's somebody else. But it's unopened. So what would happen if I sat down here now and just wiped my face with a tissue? They will just come and ask you very politely and softly, can you please move? This table is mine. Oh, well, look, I don't want to offend anybody, so uh, it's fine on the table. All right. Well, apparently in certain hawker centres, it can get so crowded that it's hard to get a seat after buying your food. And to avoid walking around with a tray of food looking like a fool, Singaporeans have taken to reserving their seats with packets of tissue paper. After learning how to reserve tables Singapore style, I discovered that the multicultural traits of Singapore is the reason why there is such a huge variety of food available. You spoil for choice. I am famished and luckily Dean is able to join us in time. Just as we start eating, I notice some peculiar eating habits. Hey, um, I noticed you two are eating with your hands. Yeah, what's wrong? Well, I just, is there a reason behind that? We normally eat with hands. That's right, with the right hand, that is. The right hand? The right hand, you're right. That's the right way? That's the right way, not with the left hand, you know why? No, I don't. Well, I believe in the Indian and the Malay culture, we think that the left hand is not the polite hand. It is the toilet hand. Ah, the toilet hand. Yeah, meaning really? for your personal ablution. <laughs> and the right hand is always the right one. It's good, it's pure, it's not evil, it's not bad. Okay, okay. Um, is there anything I can do with my left hand though, uh, apart from eating? Can I, can I shake hands with people? Or? No, you shake hands with your right hand, you receive things with your right hand, and you give things with your right hand. Never with your left. Oh. In Singapore, be prepared to be greeted with multifaceted experiences from acronyms, eating habits, to food. Durians, distinctive for their large size, unique odour and formidable thorn-covered husks. This fruit evokes reactions from deep appreciation to intense disgust. And it's a must-try, but it's not for the faint-hearted. Hey, here we are with the durian and, uh, uh, forgive me, but it looks like a chicken that's been exposed to radiation for quite a while. I mean, look at that. Okay, what does it smell really? like? Really? Oh, strong smell. It smells like uh, a guy's locker room that's been covered up with some air freshener. And what I mean by that is, <laughs> you know, the first waft you get is sweet, but then afterwards... Oh, there's a, a dark secret. It's like a dark secret. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Well, like my mother would say, the proof is in the pudding, so it's time to taste it. Here goes. Mmm. Oh. Wow. That is... <laughs> what is Really it? unusual. Right? It's creamy. And I've got onions, toffee, so many different flavours. It's like a roller coaster ride. You love this though, I right? love it, I love it. You love this? I love it. You love this? I love it's it. It's them shook. Shook, man. It's shook. 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 What does uh, shook mean? It's great. Great. Well, one thing's for sure, durian is shook. When in Singapore, don't be surprised to find people speaking a form of English that many foreigners might find strange and a tad bit hard to understand. Which is why it's good to pick up a few terms to help you fit in. 
Amazing. I mean, what's not to like? It's an incredible place. And to help me fit in are my Singapore business associates, Karis and Ian. It's like Asia for beginners, though. It's very easy for me. So what did you do last night? Oh, last night, right. To top it all, last night I, I ate durian. The king of foods. <laughs> ah, yeah, spiky green thing. Very interesting. Shit, wait. Shit, this, this is the Singlish, yep. right? <laughs> My friend was telling me about the Singlish. What, what, what is it? Simply put, it's Singapore English. Singapore English. How does it differ then from English, English people's English? Um, I think it's the grammatical structure. Because we speak Mandarin, so when you speak Mandarin, everything's back to front, and then we do direct translations, so our English always ends up back to front. Oh, right, so Singlish is like a backwards language. Yeah, and it's kind of Rojak, right? Rojak? Ah, okay, Rojak, Rojak is a local dish that we have here. Uh, you take up, uh, you cut up vegetables and fruits, throw into a bowl, mix it together. Okay, can you, uh, can you teach me some? Where to start? Something simple, huh? La. But la is a bit chim, isn't it? Chim? <laughs> What's chim? Is this a, a brand of toothpaste? Um, it's Hokkien. It's a dialect. It's, yeah, it means it's complicated. You would use it in a sentence um, to convey that someone has just said something that you don't understand. Mm. Yes. Come on, guys. I, I, I'm, I can understand difficult things. Okay, so there's las, these, laws, hors, ars. What? Is that the <laughs> Singapore directory? Together. Um, not far off. It comes at the end, except um, sentence rather than a name. Sentence. It depends on the context of uh, what you're using it in. Right. Like, you could use it to ask a question. For example? Or, like, this drink is good, huh? This drink very good, huh? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> kind of, yes, almost. Is exclamation. It? Right. Nola. Nola. Oh, do you know what? I think I have to be here a long time before I understood this because you've got, you know, uh, the Mandarin structure, then you've got words from different vocabularies, mm -hmm. and then you've got words that don't mean anything. They're like just punctuation. Yes. Yeah, and I mean, I'm more than expected to like, you know. Angmo. Yep. Yeah. What's you, this? Angmo. You, my friend, Angmo. I'm an Angmo. Yes, you are. If I'm not wrong, literally translated, it means red hair. But my hair is brown. I think it's because of. Um, blonde hair, looking red under the light, especially against white skin. I suppose the first ever Angmos to come to Singapore but probably red might hair. be quite striking. Well, I can see why you said that's cheap, you know, yeah. and it is complicated. So, give me an easy one. Alamak. Okay, alamak is a Malay word. It's alamak. alamak. Yeah. It means, oh my god. Right, okay, so I might say, what a lovely day, alamak. No, no, okay, no, no. Okay, no. um, kind of like, negative as well, like you don't use it for good things, but more like... Ah, so... Alamak, I'm so late! Yeah. Hmm? Alamak. <laughs> okay, or well, Alamak, I bang my head. Yes. Ah, you know what, I think I should, I could use some of these in my, in the business meeting to impress them that I know Singlish. Um, I might say, Alamak, um, you must oh. look at my furniture, it's no, it so <laughs> cheap. <laughs> yeah, not advisable. I mean, um, okay, even though we speak Singlish yeah. and um, in, we can code switch, so like in the office or in business meetings, we would use formal English, proper English. Yeah. Okay. Especially for your presentation, when you're talking to them. Um, you can use it to break the ice though, um, throw in like a Singaporean joke, use Singlish, stuff like that. Well, after that refreshing session of Singlish, it's time for me to come and do what it is I came here to do, which is make a business deal. Now, if you are in Singapore for business, then there are a few things you need to know, and it all starts with a proper introduction. Given the multicultural aspects of Singapore society, to do business in Singapore, it's prudent for a foreigner to be aware of certain business etiquettes and underlying religious beliefs. Apparently, in Asia, Using two hands or the right hand only to exchange business cards is an important business courtesy. I was also told that you should examine a business card properly before putting it away as it shows respect for the other party. And when you meet ladies wearing the tudong, be sure to greet them with a bow instead of a handshake. This is due to religious beliefs which forbid physical contact between the different sexes. Business culture in Singapore is more formal than in many Western countries. There are some unspoken rules and protocols that might not be apparent in the Western businessman. 
In Singapore and in many Asian societies, face is the all-important attribute that foreigners should be aware of. Face is what makes Singaporeans strive for harmonious relationships. Because of face, Singaporeans tend to be non-confrontational in their business dealings. Singaporeans will never overtly say no. Because of face and strong adherence to hierarchy, questioning authority is considered a taboo. Thus, never disagree or criticize someone who is senior to you in rank in public, as it may destroy the business relationship. When conducting business in Singapore, pay close attention to facial expressions, tone of voice and posture, as Singaporeans trust non-verbal communication more than spoken words. Be mindful how you might be perceived. They do not understand Western culture's ability to respond to a question hastily and believe that this indicates thoughtlessness and rude behavior. So in other words, as a foreigner in any business situations in Singapore, be sure to mind your manners and speak when spoken to without any needless commentaries and business can carry on as usual. Thank you. Thank you so much. Singapore is a multi-religious country with the majority practicing Buddhism and Taoism. A significant number of the population practice Christianity and Islam as well. Sikhism, Hinduism and the people of Baha'i faith can also be found here. Due to the multicultural, multi-religious aspect of Singapore society, cultural tolerance and racial harmony are strongly advocated. The different religions are allowed to practice with mutual tolerance, so don't be surprised if you walk into some culturally shocking situations that are commonplace in Singapore. According to Taoist Chinese beliefs, the living are to burn offerings to the deceased ancestors who are, well, apparently in hell. So this shop sells materials which are burnt for what they call the Hungry Ghost Festival, which is a Chinese festival that takes place on the seventh lunar month every year. And these, this is an example of hell notes, okay? And this is a $1 billion hell note here. These will cost you $2. So you can see, inflation is pretty high in hell. As a sign of respect and reverence, these offerings are in terms of hell money and a whole lot more. Offerings like shirts, cars, houses, condos are offered to them usually during the Chinese lunar seventh month. Walking around, I simply couldn't believe the extent of traditional beliefs that exist amongst this ultra-modern society. So, say if you have a, a treasured auntie who you want to pay a tribute to, perhaps, um, you may burn her this special pack. Uh, you've got a purse, a watch, and a blouse. Or, something like this. Because, um, Obviously, modesty is still very important in hell. Look at this. So, say if you've got an uncle who's partial to a drink, or even a smoke, you'd burn these. And of course, hygiene is very important even in hell, so afterwards you might need to freshen up, you'd burn these. And if you wanted him to be able to experience the internet there in hell, you'd burn this. Everything's catered for here. Amazing. Now it's things like this which might seem silly or strange or culture shocking, but we should show some respect because disrespect will be seen as a sacrilege and it might even be considered a bad karmic move. But Singapore wasn't always this multicultural or multi-religious. To tell me more about the rise of this colorful island, my friend, a curator, is going to bring me on a tour around Singapore National Museum. Well, here I am with Mr. Iskander Maidin, who is a deputy director here at the National Museum of Singapore. Now, Mr. Maidin is going to take me for a tour around their special history gallery. Now, I believe the gallery has a completely different way of telling the story of Singapore. How is it different? Well, it uses a storytelling approach to tell the history of Singapore, uh, the stories of the great men, as well as the little people who usually don't get into the history textbook. Mr. Maiden, what can you tell me about the role this man had to play in the history of Singapore? Raffles laid the foundations for the development of the Singapore Trading Port when he signed the treaty with Sultan Hussein 
of Singapore in February 1819. As a result of his foresight, Sir Stamford Raffles is recognised as the founding father of Singapore. Uh, well, what we have here is a segment dealing with the Japanese invasion of Singapore, followed by the Japanese occupation of Singapore. The first area bombing of Singapore by the Japanese took place in December 1941, and the invasion of Singapore, which lasted a week, took place in February 1942. The Japanese occupation made Singaporeans realize that they couldn't rely on anyone else for their defense, and therein sets the path to its independence. Well, what a trip. I've learned to adapt to the people here, the weather, the culture, the mannerisms. I've learned all about Singapore's excellent public transport systems and its business systems. I've even learned about this quirky lingo they have here called Singlish and about their religions and beliefs. What a place. I've had a real shock time. It's amazing how a little red dot on the map can offer so much. Well, that's all for me here, but please join me again next time for more culture shocking moments here on Culture Shock. Today, Singapore has evolved from its rich history to become possibly one of the more prosperous nations in Asia. With its winning formula of economic, geographic and human resource factors, the city-state has made the best of what it's got to become what it is today. On this island, where East meets West, Singapore's ability to embrace its many myriad of cultures make it something uniquely its own. It's certainly quite a feat in itself, truly an eye-opener for me.